Life is short. Eat your caviar with your animal crackers. I bear the responsibility of all of my decisions. Good thing I'm always right. Hello, I'm Hunter Hardin. And I'm Papa the Bear, and welcome to The Real House Bears. This is the final reunion, part three of Salt Lake City, y'all. And we're gonna talk about it on our podcast, cause why? I'm here, I'm queer. <laughs> And I'm going to do this podcast. Absolutely <laughs> you are. You're not a hero. But you know what? I'm no matter if I there. don't want to do it. <laughs> I am not there, but I am queer and I'm doing this podcast. Yes, you are. <laughs> uh, so welcome back, everybody. Um, I am currently in Tempe, Arizona. While Hunter Hardin, my beauty, is still back home in Salt Lake City. So if things look and sound a little bit different this week, that's why. Yes. So what? So what? Finally, part three of the reunion, all of the things that we've been waiting for all this time. Mm-hmm. But before we get into our final episode of this season, we got some biz nas to take on. Yes. First, we have someone who is hashtag how spares famous. Yes, we do. Um, I'm going to give a shout out to, turns out this person, I actually knew that they knew me from the show because her husband, who I graduated high school with, sent me a DM back, you know, in season three when I was on the show. But this week... Ryan, R-I-A-N, Ryan Reedling, um, on Twitter, X, posted, and I couldn't agree more, <clears throat> I don't understand why we haven't seen at Real House Bears behind the bar in the clubhouse. Yeah, who the hell were those bros that were at oh, the, well, no, the Bravo, Bravo bros. bros they have they, they're, they're a big podcast they have they have quite a they have a quite a following and, and quite a listenership so I thought it made sense that they were there but it doesn't make sense that we haven't been there but we are funnier than them right well maybe I, you know what I've only this is like <laughs> one episode I, I mean I'm I, I mean, we're definitely better looking, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, but I don't know. So, but yeah, I mean, I think me and you and Dre actually, since Dre was co-founder of our choir, I think the three of us should be behind the the bar together. We should. I think it'd be awesome. It would be so much fun. So, Ryan, thank you. Maybe the gods, like Andy Cohen and company, are listening and reading your tweet. <laughs> So thank you for being hashtag House Bears Famous. TDM us to your help. TDM us. Um, another thing going on in our lives is that we don't have anything else to talk about on our podcast for a while. Yeah, everything, all the seasons are starting later on and we don't really have anything to cover. You know, Beverly Hills postponing their filming really screwed up our schedule. Yeah. You know, we normally cover Beverly Hills, then Salt Lake City afterwards, then straight into New Jersey. It's been working great for years. Since 2020, it's been working great. But freaking Lisa Rinna messed up Beverly Hills and messed up our schedule. Oh, you're so angry. Jersey doesn't come back. And I've read both February and I've read April. Hmm. I don't know when New Jersey's coming back. But I do know that we're not interested in covering Vanderpump rules. No, I'm not interested in doing that. That's too much. Um, it's just too much content and stuff. And for one thing, we're probably never going to do it again anyways. Yeah, and we're and the real we, are, we are a Housewives podcast as yes. well. House Bears. Housewives. Speaking of, do you... <laughs> today I wore, obviously, my House Bears t-shirt while I was flying. And do you know how many people asked me... Of course they said, is that your podcast? And then they said, well, what's it about? 
And like, wouldn't you just assume that the Real House Bears would be about the Real Housewives? Or am I just too of a shallow thinker? <laughs> I just don't think the Real Housewives is a part of everybody's vernacular. Oh. Yeah, I know. Gasp, I know. So, but because I get the same thing well, too. Talk more about that. Explain that. <laughs> <laughs> I know that doesn't really quite make sense. So, yeah. um, what I'm saying is, we don't know what's happening next. We do know, and I'm sorry for those of you that this upsets greatly, but we do know that we're going to take a few weeks off. That breaks my heart. Yeah, I was actually thinking, I was hoping that we could try to figure out how to do like those YouTube videos where they're watching something and it's up in the corner of the screen and people are watching it too. We could comment on it yeah. and uh, cover our um, ghost hunting episode as well, a special. Yeah, we're, so yeah, I was going to bring that up too. So we haven't talked to Dre and Paul yet. So Dre and Paul, if you're listening, be looking out for a text or a phone call from me. <laughs> but, you know, we did mention a few weeks ago or a month or so ago that we were on another show with Dre and Paul called Ghost Vlogs. So um, we're gonna, I'm going to reach out to Paul and Dre and see if they're interested in recapping ghost vlogs with us. And, you know, we'll pop in whenever there's something monumental. You know, like, remember that show? What was that show called that the people, different couples and stuff would sit on a couch and watch shows and comment People's on couch. it? People's, People's couch. couch. <laughs> Typical. <laughs> and Jimmy. So we'll see, y'all. I'm sorry that we don't have a more definitive answer for you, uh, that we don't have a plan. I, I can't, I doubt that we're going to wait until April to start back, if that's truly how long New Jersey takes. But People will forget about us. Yeah, uh, we don't want you to forget about us. So don't be alarmed if we're not around for a few weeks. But just keep, you know, refreshing that podcast feed and um, we'll try to keep you apprised of our comings and goings on our social media. Maybe we'll post a little bit more personal stuff than we normally do, just so that you know that we're here and we're thinking of you as we hope you're thinking of us. Well, and also we probably could also do like little micro episodes yeah. of of watching, we, of we just talking about the, what shows are on. We're watching the traders. So you never know if something crazy will happen on the traders. Um, and know, there's other housewife shows on. Yeah, too. we're watching Beverly Hills in Miami and Potomac. Of course, I'm watching them all. Yeah. So we might have plenty of things to say that we need to pop in and let y'all know that we're thinking about you and obviously thinking about Bravo. Um, but we're going to take a few weeks off. And, you know, we haven't taken more than a week or two off, really, probably since we started that I can think of. So uh, we deserve it. We do. I'm not going to get emotional. <laughs> this is our like hundredth season. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, we we do have like a hundred and fifty episodes. Right? We're hundred and forty something episodes. Yeah, that's intense. That's a lot of episodes. Well, what can you say? We're slaying the podcast game. We are slaying the <laughs> podcast game. All right. Well, let's get into the dramatic conclusion, part three. <laughs> of the Real Housewives of Salt Lake City reunion. Okay. We have a lot to discuss. Mm -hmm. I love it that right away, Andy is like, Meredith, do you like hate me or something? Because you have given me the stink eye for like two hours now. And I started noticing like in the last episode and this episode, Meredith almost looks like all of her like weed gummies have kicked in. And she's just like <laughs> staring. She's not really Especially looking at anybody. Everyone's getting tired, yeah. I think, just what, I think what it is, is that, you know, Meredith has either sat with practically her back to Monica or straight forward on that couch that is slanted out. So I think that she's just kind of looking to the side at Andy, which probably looks like a lot of side eye. Yeah. Maybe, like, yeah. Monica, I mean, Meredith has literally sat with either with her back <laughs> to Monica or just like, again, straight forward on that couch that's a little bit angled out. And she wasn't able to like sit all the way back on the couch either because even Whitney had to like look around Meredith <laughs> to talk to Andy. Whitney spent this entire reunion, but I really noticed it most in part three, like looking, uh, trying to see the other end of the couch. Like Meredith was in her way. The couch was maybe angled out a bit too much. And Whitney was like leaned over through the whole entire 
Yeah, it was, it was, uh, it kept catching me. <laughs> well, we start off talking about games. We've got the drag competition in Palm Springs. We've got who's on your wagon at the Pioneer Lunch. Um, and of course, we haven't gotten to Bermuda yet. So starting off with the games, they talk about Monica's very immature, low blow insults. Mm -hmm. I mean, Lisa Barlow really is right. She's like, where where do you come back after? You're old, you're ugly, you're wrinkly. You're, I mean, where- It's like, a, well, it's like what a 10 year old would say to you. 100%. And you know what she also does? And it's something that you do all the time. <laughs> is whenever anybody insults her, she insults them back with the exact same thing. <laughs> like, you're a moron. You're a moron. You're not really good at arguing. Like, well, she does yeah, that I do that. Throughout, all throughout that. this whole, every single time somebody insults her, she automatically insults back with the exact same insult. That's, that's true, she does. And it's true that I do, but it's just because I don't deserve the insults. Oh. So, push hmm. that right back. <laughs> that's interesting. <laughs> So Meredith actually did make butter. I wanted. I want to try it. I feel like I can, well. So, you know, I made that um, handmade whipped cream at Christmas. So if I can make handmade whipped cream, certainly I can make handmade butter. Just shake if, Mer butter. if Meredith, who has never cooked anything in her life, can make churn butter, you can. You can I mean, do it. So, and plus, that's a motion I do all the time. Yeah. Because you're a dirty, stinky boy. And then <laughs> Meredith took her butter to restaurants. <laughs> like, I am dead from that. I am just dead from that. That is one of the funniest things. Well, she's not going to use it at home. <laughs> oh, yeah, they don't eat at home. <laughs> Do you remember, like, in season one or two, when she opened up the fridge, there was nothing but drinks in there? Yeah. And almond but milk. <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh, that Brooks handmade. <laughs> yeah. Dead. All right. Lisa gets her makeup done every day. Glam and go. Glam and it's go. It's glam and go. I wonder, I mean, even on weekends, even if she doesn't, I bet you there's probably not a day that Lisa Barlow doesn't plan to leave her house. She's yeah, I bet. And, and plus, I think that now that she, I mean, I, granted, she hasn't been doing her own makeup since 2019, but I feel like that's kind of like a skill you got to keep doing to yourself, otherwise you lose it. Well, so she probably but, can't do her, like she said she would literally die if she had to do her own makeup. So. Well, and plus, apparently she's blind and can't even see to do her own makeup. Did you Lisa. catch that? Yeah, Lisa's crazy. <laughs> well, and I think it's partially because, you know, she doesn't feel confident in the skill, she can't see, and plus, she just likes it. Yeah. I'm like, I'm going to die with glam and draped in diamonds. That's what I want in a housewife. I don't know how women do their hair and makeup every day because I just like try to do like my hair now that it's long and just having my arms up like on top of my head doing stuff or like just holding a blow dryer curling hair. That is like, oh my God, muscles I don't ever use. <laughs> Girl, asking me to shave my head once or twice a week, you might as well <laughs> tie me down and beat me. <laughs> but Mary's like, Lisa, you do know that's because you're insecure, right? Shut up, Mary. <laughs> God, why? She doesn't say anything positive. She does say something positive once. And I love it when she does because everybody applauds her for it. I know. Well, I wrote Mary. <laughs> Later on, so when, nice. she when she uh, gives Heather a compliment, I knew exactly. Yeah, uh, it's just she's, Mary is just ridiculous. And she constantly, I think she's insecure. So she puts it out on everyone else. So all of the insults she gives everyone else is because of her. You or know, she's just I, a bitch. <laughs> with Mary in general, though, I think there's something missing where she doesn't make a connection of how things sound mean. I think, like, remember when she was on Watch What Happens Live and she's like, Andy, was that mean? Was that mean? You have to tell me when I'm being mean. I think that she doesn't, like, I don't think she knows what inbred means. She didn't, I mean, she obviously didn't know what a, pedo, uh, what a predator was because she called it a pornographer or whatever pornography i yeah. think she just doesn't understand that these things that most of us are like oh my god that's so hateful i think she just is ignorant to the fact that they're mean i just think she's just so full of herself that well, she I, just thinks yeah, that she is she i think she is god 
Truly. Well, we, but her, we but them saying them. like, what's worse, just commenting, making little comments about your decor or saying somebody looks inbred and she's like, my decor. It's like, yeah. uh, but he, then Mary has said so many nasty things about everyone else's houses. <laughs> I can only imagine what she said about um, Monica's. Well, I doubt she's ever been. Well, we have yeah. Monica's impression of Lisa Barlow, which is pretty good. Almost spot on. And then we have Meredith's impression of Whitney. That's Mary's impression of Whitney. And Mary's just being a bitch doing her impression. <laughs> and then we have Angie's impression of Meredith. But you know, all of these women, except for Monica and Lisa, they all have a really good, they laugh about it like it's funny. They, they really grew together at this uh, end of the season. So uh, Mary claims that she was not intending to body shame Heather by calling her course at a size 14, which, I mean, there's nothing, I mean, being a size 14 is just as beautiful as a size two, but it's really, I, she just doesn't get that you're like calling her bigger than she is. Yeah. And, you know, I don't think anyone wants to be called bigger than they are. <laughs> and why do you care if it's not real, Mary, if it's not a real Gucci top? But then again, Mary uh, does give Heather a beautiful uh, compliment. And I, like, I even like when Mary went, well, apparently Heather shamed me because she looks amazing tonight. And I think she looks really good, especially today. I guess she shamed uh -huh. me because she looks great. <laughs> oh, that's nice. That's nice, Mary. That's nice. Yeah. <laughs> but all of the women are like, oh, Mary, Mary oh, that was so nice of you. <laughs> well, you have to acknowledge it. Um, does Mary interest have interest in coming back to the show and being with the group? And Mary says, as long as people allow me to be me. As long as people accept me and I cut them down. <laughs> yeah, as long as I can be as mean and hateful as I want and they just take it. Yeah. Uh, but then she gets into like, Whitney. she really hates Whitney, okay? She just, Mary oh my gosh. It's like Whitney. I was watching an episode of Friends today, and it was the one where Phoebe was really mad at Ross, but she couldn't remember why. And then I, when they finally figure it out, that was the other day again too. Yeah. I mean, we just saw that. Yeah. And she, uh, she finally figures out at the end it was because she had a dream that she forgot about that, and she forgot, but she was still mad at him for some reason. So I just feel like Mary's just like randomly hating people for no reason. <laughs> well, she's hated Whitney from the beginning, and she continues to hate her. Yeah. Whitney says that she is not like afraid of Mary, like Mary's gonna hurt me, but I'm afraid of Mary because I know how hurtful her tongue is. Yeah, we saw the texts. <laughs> Mary doesn't get it though, she doesn't get it. Um, I was surprised though, Meredith and Mary seem to have it down, how to navigate disagreements. How can Mary disagree with Meredith, you know, respectfully, but not disagree respectfully with any of the other women? Yeah, so you like could tell she's doing it on purpose. True. She knows what she's doing. Absolutely. All right. Now they all pause for a bathroom break, and then we get into only not even fifteen minutes in. We finally get into what we've all been waiting for: Bermuda in general, not just Reality Bontis, but Bermuda. And um, the one thing that I want to point out that I think I hope was edited out is that we never see any of these women apologize to Meredith for blaming her for the, for the Greek mafia rumors in the DMs. This is incredibly ill-mannered and rude. Yeah, I know. And Meredith doesn't even really demand a, an apology from any of them. I mean, they barely even talk about it, but I mean, Lisa Barlow stood up and called Meredith a liar. Heather told her that they believed Monica over her. Like all of those women, owe her if they didn't already give her one an apology for like i'm so sorry that i took monica's word over yours about anything well well at the very least lisa needs to apologize because lisa went overboard yeah. uh -huh. gave us good tv though yeah well monica gets her chance to say her piece and through this entire, you know, she ended up the finale with like, I've got so much more to say. I just didn't think they would be receptive to it. But she did she give us anything new in this part? She, she, she had nothing new. And the things that she did say, she kind of got caught in, in lies and other things that she, so you could tell by the end of this, she was so like 
frustrated because all of her lies and stuff weren't panning out. She, everyone was catching her on everything. And they were laughing at her because the lies were so ridiculous. Yes. So um, Monica says she is part of the page. She did not set up the account. Um, she did, um, but the uh, account started in 2021, originally to created to expose how Jen Shaw treated her employees. Check that. Ex she said it was created to expose how Jen Shaw treated her employees. And then it later says, well, also it was because we wanted to expose her for the FBI. And it's because we want, and then we end up doing this, and we end up doing that. So it was not about exposing how she treated her employees. It's about exposing all kinds of things. Yeah. But <laughs> Monica doesn't think that Reality Bontis ever went after the other women. But what she doesn't understand is that even simply by repeatedly posting horrible things that Jen Shaw had to say about, you know, Heather, for example, then all of the world is repeatedly seeing this insult about Heather. Yeah. Monica doesn't get it that she's spreading rumors and quote unquote her facts. Um, yeah, but but, she, really but even, if, even if she didn't post it on the page, don't tell me that she didn't dig up stuff constantly. It was like her biggest hobby. Well, and then what about saying something like Heather is a grandma trying to get some big black D? And she said, no, that's what uh, Jen said about you. And I'm just like, I love it that she's got an excuse for everything. But Heather shows she's been tagged hundreds of times on this page. And don't tell me it was hundreds of compliments. Right. There was, she did post, she did share like two posts that were semi nice out of all of them. <laughs> right. Heather was like, yeah, it was one out of tens of thousands. Yeah, and she probably only posted that one once. <laughs> and then they argue for no good reason about whether it started two years or three years ago, like who cares? But then yeah. Heather says, well, Monica doesn't even have a, deserve a platform to talk about it. And Monica's like, oh, I don't deserve it? Well, let me pull out my burn book. Wah, wah, wah. It well, fails I, miserably. <laughs> I immediately posted on Twitter. I was like, that burn book was the flop prop of the century. I think it would have worked on a different cast, a different a different show, a different Real, House, Real Housewives franchise, and maybe like five, ten years ago. <laughs> well, it would be also work a lot better if Monica was just able to think for herself and to, I mean, she, she references, pop. you can tell that she really wanted to be on this show because she references pop culture all the time. She, I, I said early on a different episode that she doesn't have an identity. She identifies through pop culture stuff. Like she said, I'm dead. Like Taylor Swift said, I'm dead. And then she said something else about somebody and someone else. And now this burn book is legit straight from Mean Girls. But and it's like, she has up. no originality. She is just constantly watching TV and wanting to be a part, wanting to be famous. That's what she wants. The burn book could have been effective if it actually, she had cut out the first part that was supposed to be like funny where she talked about herself and talked about Andy Cohen. That's and that, that she made like the day before. <laughs> but in, to be on to be honest with you, if we were in a completely different circumstance where she wasn't a liar who had infiltrated the show, the first part of the burn book was actually funny. Mm -hmm. But then all the stuff that she wanted to use as like her evidence or whatever was in the back of the burn book, so we never got to it. Um, and Monica says that she's like, it's it's supposed to be funny. It's not supposed to be taken seriously. And I'm like, oh my God, you just <laughs> you just keep on digging yourself a deeper hole, girl. <laughs> but and another thing is, Monica, maybe she says I'm sorry once. I don't know, but she's not apologetic. Like if she would have come to these women with a, an apologetic attitude, you know, Whitney in particular, she's a love and light kind of person. Yeah. Heather is a very uh, loving person. I want to be your friend kind of person. She really could have turned this around even once she got busted, if she would have just had a different attitude about it. Like, listen, you know, I was involved. I regretted being involved. Uh, I quit before casting, you know, type of thing. But none but, of that. But if you are constantly lying <laughs> about everything in your life 
It's hard to believe anything. You can't, you, I don't know. Well, you just can't Monica, trust it. What about Monica being in shock that they're mad because they were all such big fans of the page? Oh my gosh. Yeah, even even awesome. Andy Cohen says that this book and Reality Bontese is just spreading hurt and it's not helpful at all. Yes. I really enjoyed Andy in this part because, you know, in the first two parts, I really felt like he was very, you know, compassionate towards Monica. And not that I don't want Monica to receive compassion and empathy in life, but, you know, she clearly was the villain of the season. But this episode, he called her out on all of her stuff. Man, yeah, he really did call her out on on stuff too, and even calls out um, Heather about the the producers and black oh, yeah, guy we'll thing. Get to that that was ugly. I hate that. We'll get mm-hmm. to that. But um, I also like when Monica was trying to justify it. Heather's like, "You listen, you're not a hero in this situation. You trying to expose things that Jen Shaw was saying about me does not make you a hero. It just makes you spreading those horrible things that she said about me across the world." Yeah. And then um, Andy asked Monica if she wanted, actually wanted to be these ladies' friend, or did she just want to be on the show? And Monica's like, "Well, both can be true," and I do agree with that. Yeah, because Monica says, "What's Monica wrong? With, what's wrong with wanting to be on this couch?" And I'm like, yeah. "Granted, but yeah. also you're doing it by being vindictive and causing harm." To yeah, others. the lie there is you're not interested in being their friends if you're going to be talking shit about them on your. And also, uh, Heather also says something about says something later. She's like, "You don't have a career." And you don't have husbands, a family like you have to protect like the rest of us do. And that pisses Monica off so bad. She's like, don't you come for my small business. I'm like, you mean your small business that you are backed up on orders and not refilling orders? (laughs) But she's just, she's like, how dare you talk about small businesses? You really are a heartless person. She was being vindictive, causing trouble. She wanted to be on the show. She even messaged producers and said, your show is crap. It's going to be canceled. You need me on the show to create drama, you know? Well, she didn't really say that. (laughs) But that's basically what it was. She wanted to be on the show so it would get better ratings. Right. So Monica actually knew the story about Lisa going to meet Snoop Dogg because Monica was logging into Jen Shaw's security system. Well, actually... Monica was logging into her own security system that right. was installed inside of Jen Shaw's house. Wait a minute, what? How is Jen Shaw so stupid as to let Monica? I mean, she really must have trusted Monica. Well, I don't think Jen Shaw, Jen Shaw could have understood that you could view them on different platforms and stuff. I don't know. Maybe not. And I, I mean, maybe I'm ignorant. Maybe I wouldn't have thought that. But damn, I was like, you really. You really must have thought Monica was on your side if you let her put her own security system in your house. Yeah. Or you just must have been so ignorant about what's going on around you. (laughs) And then we get into the Jen Shaw house drive-bys. That are, it's stalking. (laughs) 100%. Monica even says stalking on the video. Yes. (laughs) She, okay, if you are staking out someone's house with binoculars and multiple times that is called stalking (laughs) yeah yeah even according to your own definition monica but monica's like oh it was just two or three times and heather's like i have like 20 videos yeah you had binoculars on (laughs) you're you're spying on (laughs) but not only did she deny doing drive-bys but then she said she did drive bys because the FBI asked her to do it. Yeah, she was hired by the FBI. So the, the FBI lies asked just her to be piling. a special covert agent to take down Jen Shaw because they needed help. I mean, I was laughing <laughs> right along with Lisa and Angie K. This and everyone and Whitney, ever they were all laughing. Really, I think even Andy was probably laughing. Like that. Uh, was, I, so, I mean, just think of the stack of lies. Lie number one: I wasn't driving by her house. Lie number two, I only drove by her house two or three times. Lie number three, the FBI asked me to drive by her house. Four, I wasn't stalking her. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, just so many lies right there compounded one on top of the other. But apparently Monica was trying to bust Jen Shaw drinking and driving so that she could report it and get Jen Shaw arrested and, of course, 
um, found that she was breaking the rules of her probation or whatever. I don't even remember ever seeing Jen Shaw driving. Right. <laughs> well, here's, but I say this, F, with this FBI moment, this FBI scene, I mean, I know that Monica still has, you know, Monica stands all over the world who just think she's the best thing in the world. But I think this is also where she lost lots of people like, okay, you really can't tell the truth, can you though? Yeah, yeah. If you can't be a, a good villain, <laughs> then you're not going to be a likable villain. And, you know, Heather mentioning how part of, the, you know, the social media aspect really ruins the amazing experience of being a housewife. And, you know, I've seen Andy say that to a hundred different housewives, just like, don't read the comments. You've seen it with me on yeah. my small fame <laughs> well, people I are horrible on my own feed and i have no fame so i mean i get it um but you know i think all housewives would say the same thing like the social media part is the hardest part and then to have one of our own perpetrate you know perpetuating that yeah is just the worst it's not iconic to be a bully yeah. um and then Lisa Barlow gets ticked off. She's like, Bravo, let her come on this show and they didn't care anything about our feelings and blah, blah, blah. And Andy's like, wait a minute, what? <laughs> and Heather says, Monica has been saying that Bra that the network knew. And, and Monica like, said that when she went in for her first interview, she told the producers that she was a part of Reality Von Tees. And that's when Andy's like, nope, nope. We would not have cast you if that was the case. Yeah. And I've seen other posts and tweets from other producers and creators. And they're like, listen, they do go through a lot of pre-casting people, but I can guarantee you no one that I know of knew anything about that. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, it's um, she another lot. And even when she, Andy says that to her, she doesn't say, I did go ask blah, 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 whoever she interviewed with. She just says, oh. So it's like, you just got caught in another lie. <laughs> I mean, episode three was really, I thought, the chance that Monica, the time that Monica was going to shine in this reunion. And she just failed over and over and over again. She just had no leg to stand on because she'd been lying about everything. And once it starts tumbling down, all those lives fall. And again, she really didn't have anything new that Heather hadn't already said. Yeah, there was nothing that, validated anything she did i mean i'm sorry to our listeners who really love monica i mean i'm i'm, I'm don't deny that she helped make this an incredible and, uh, season of television. it's because of her this this episode was so good this season but she's not a good human <laughs> she's uh yeah. i don't think that our housewives deserve that kind of thing then we spend a moment on the greek mafia Monica stands by the fact that she did not send Meredith those DMs, but she and Meredith, in fact, both received those DMs at the same time. Why are you lying? You're flat out lying? Girl. <laughs> Meredith was like, damn it, why did I talk to her off camera? Yeah, she was so pissed about that. <laughs> Um, Monica, so Monica doesn't understand that by repeating what Jen Shaw said, you're again, perpetuating that on social media. But she, what she also doesn't understand here is that when you say something on camera, if you're the first person to say it on camera, then technically you're the one starting it. Yeah. If you talk about it off camera, the world doesn't know. So you're really only kind of starting it in your group. But if you bring it up on camera, then you're starting it with the world. Yeah. I mean, we heard everything, the first rumors of everything from Monica first. Yeah. So now, I will say that when Angie K called Monica a low brow rat, I thought I heard Brown also. I don't I, know what I heard. No, I, but I thought it was like a just not, I thought it was like her tongue got tied. It's like, like slurring of the word. It's hard to say low brow rat. Yeah. So I think it sounded like her intentions was to say something else, but it did sound like Brown. But even Andy was like, no, it was low brow, low brow. We're good. We're good. <laughs> and then finally, um, before the warm and fuzzy, cold and prickly, we get Heather's black eye. <sighs> you know, some people, people on social media are both relieved and forgiving and then also angry and even more mad than they were before. 
Yeah. I. It wasn't the best way to handle it. But you know what? It was Hannah Williams really in this reunion. It was. Kind but of I think some. Beautiful. I think a lot of people understood more that Jen Shaw put a lot of pressure on her. Yeah. So we find out really Heather was just essentially scared of Jen Shaw's retaliation. Very similar to how these women are scared of what Mary's going to retaliate with her words. But we get new footage from San Diego um, that you really can't hear the audio. And when production originally saw this video, they took it to Heather and Jen Shaw and they said it was a conversation about something else. But now Heather's coming clean and we hear Jen Shaw say, I did that to you. I can't believe I did that to you. And Heather replying, don't worry about it. I gotcha. But we still don't really figure out how it happened because there was scratches was and stuff just, all over. I really think it was just a drunken, remember in that episode, they were pull, taking off their tops and showing their boobs and they were drunk as hell. I mean, stuff that they just normally never do, you know? They just looked like grab scratch marks on her arm, you know? Yeah, I, I think they were just playing and being silly and drunk and she accidentally hit her in the face. But if that was really just an accident and super innocent, why not just say that? Because Jen Shaw was going on was being going through this court situation. I know, but I don't I didn't think that a playful, funny uh, uh bump well, in the I face gave somebody a black eye. I think it's just a thing that you can't risk, I guess. Okay. Um, one more thing that people can use against her. Yeah, that's true. So Heather gives a great apology. She apologizes to Andy, the network, the housewives, the audience. Um, and she doesn't even remember the details of how it happens. You know, it's just, again, it was kind of like one of those blackout nights where you wake up and you don't know where your clothes are and you got a black eye. Yeah. But Andy... I think that Andy genuinely likes Heather Gay, um, and if I and I know that like when she was on Watch What Happens for the very first time, they went out afterwards and and on the town and stuff. So I think that Andy really likes Heather, but he does not let her go easy about saying that a producer could have done it. Yeah, or like a producer could have edited the footage, you know. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. He was not happy about that at all. Yeah, he doesn't uh, because it was becoming an investigation. Yeah, yeah. He doesn't let her let her get away with it easily, but she's like, listen, it was just a funny, like, flippant, absurd joke. Like, it was maybe some hot producer came in and, you know, blah, 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 blah. It wasn't like a real accusation. Yeah, and, she, and Heather did say, she's like, I I'm taking full responsibility for it, and she has been taking a beating on social media, and Andy's like, yeah, you have. Okay, you're good. <laughs> right. So Andy asks, and I feel like he had to ask this multiple times throughout the rest of this episode is the grace that you're asking for heather you know the forgiveness that you're asking for the same about lies the same grace that should go to monica and heather's like i mean i can't really answer that but let me explain this you know i internalized it i kept it to myself monica decided to spread it out to the world and also heather just apologized for it very sincerely just now on the show we're still so around. and i haven't yeah. heard monica do that at all yeah so why should we forgive monica for not being sorry yeah um and then heather asked monica you know what do you think about this and monica kind of like heather and i and angie k bonded over and before she even finished the sentence lisa Barlow, what about me what about me what about what, what should shaw have done to me I was almost attacked by Jen Shaw. <laughs> yeah, it was funny. I just love that she funny. needs to be a part of this this conversation. Jumped in. I love it. Um, Andy asks all of the women how they feel now that they know the truth about the black eye, and this group of women rallied around Heather. They all were compassionate, empathetic. They all understood. They all related. They've all been on the ugly side of Jen Shaw before. Yeah, they all could relate in yeah. some form or fashion. And I I was so happy for Heather yeah. that all of the women validated her a bit, you know? Because you can tell Heather was, I mean, she, she really, she got some knocks for that. And Jen Shaw put her through the ringer. Too, Heather you know, like being like and, fan favorite to public enemy number one for some people. Yeah. 
And then when Whitney does such a Whitney thing to do, like going over and hugging Heather. I feel like if we've seen this before. Oh yeah. But then Andy did something that I also thought was quite beautiful. He leaves it with Heather. I think you said everything that there is to say. And I really think there's nothing left to be said about it. Yeah. It's like time to move on. Like that was oh, your, man. that was your release. Thank you for giving the world permission to never talk about this again. Yeah, I don't want to hear about Jen Shaw anymore. And Heather's black eye. Yeah. But it was very gracious to but, give But Heather basically, with that little speech, I felt like Heather kind of took herself back from the situation. Yeah, I mean, I felt like her... Took back her power. There yeah. you go. I regret believing in you. I regret turning on my... All of you... In her defense, I regret fighting her fight. I regret disrespecting my children and my family and my opportunity here. I really thought that it was very gracious of Andy to like, you know what? That was wrapped up in a bow. We're not talking about it ever again. Yeah, that was perfect. When Andy asks if there's any chance for Grace for Monica, none of them have any for her. No. Um, Whitney is like... I'm going to give you this long explanation, but the bottom line is no. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it's true. You you can't have any type of relationship with anyone if you don't trust a single word they say. Yeah, Meredith, I think Meredith said it. She's like, there's been so much trust that's been damaged. I don't think you could come back from it. Yeah. Now, yeah. I was listening to Radio Andy today on my drive from the Tempe airport to my hotel. And Andy said that um, well, you know, Monica is no longer on the show. It's That's been all over the news and social media. But Andy said it, it's possibly more of a pause than a firing. Huh. That they, <laughs> want to get, they want to put time for everyone to, like, heal and maybe even hope that Monica will personally mend a few fences off camera between now and a potential return. Maybe have a career. Yeah, maybe be on Traders. Yeah. Uh, I did see a, a meme today with her on it and said the show for traitors. I mean, and I was like, oh, that's a great idea. <laughs> I th you know, the reason why it's not a great idea is because Monica's a horrible liar. Oh, uh, that's true. Yeah. She's terrible. I mean, I think it's a great idea. Don't get me wrong. I think it's a great idea, but Monica's a horrible liar. She shows her. Clear. Yeah. Maybe not as a traitor. Maybe she would be good as a faithful. Yeah. She needs to be a faithful. Cause she'd be, liar. she would still spread she'll rumors. Be good at snipping out a liar. Yeah. There you go. Mm -hmm. All right. Warm and fuzzy, cold and pricklies from the season. Angie K's warm and fuzzy was Greek Easter. Cold and prickly was the rubies in the nest. The rubies of the Whitney's warm and fuzzy is that she's stronger this year. Her cold and prickly, just like pretty much everyone else for the rest of the night, is being let down by Monica. Lisa is enjoying her woman fuzzy is the better relationships with the women, except Monica. Mm -hmm. And Jack's journey being documented, her cold and prickly is the way we left Bermuda. Meredith's warm and fuzzy, which I completely support, is successfully churning butter. Yes. And I completely support her coming out with a line of bath butter. I think that I think it's genius. Perfect. And uh, I mean, it was her tagline this season, y'all. Um, but her cold and prickly is having an off-camera conversation with no way of backtracking. Yeah. Um, Heather's warm and fuzzy is um, the book event, which we were at. Yes. Her because that's when her relationship with Lisa really started to change. And of course, her cold and prickly is reality von Tisa and Bermuda. Now, Monica... She's the only one to start off with her cold and prickly. But her cold and prickly and her warm and fuzzy are the same. But that just shows just like what, what a negative person she is. You know, that's just like what, what she like focuses on. That she started off going, well, my cold and prickly is where everyone else said my warm and fuzzy first. That's the name of the game. Warm and fuzzy, cold and prickly. When she came into the reunion, she was had her head up high. She was ready to give it to all these girls. But then once it didn't work, you could see the last end part of this episode. She has her hair in her face and she's looking down and she's giving like one word answers. Like she's fit throwing. 
because she lost. She completely lost because Andy literally says, all right, you've had all day long to state your piece. I'm giving you one last chance. I want you to make, I told you, I want you to make sure that you have the opportunity to say anything. Is there anything else you want to say? And she just says, no. Because she's got to think about it. And when she thinks about a good lie around it, and make herself look good, she'll post it's it on been, social media. It's been great to hear something that we hadn't already heard before. Maybe even just say, I'm, I hate that this got out of hand so quickly and I'm ashamed of myself and I'm sorry. Yeah. Boom. <laughs> yeah. Um, but you know, what was your warm and fuzzy and cold and prickly of this season? Um, well, obviously the warm and fuzzy was Heather's book event because we were there. Yes. And um, how beautiful. You got lots of camera time on that and you looked amazing. I sure did with my long hair. Mm -hmm. My cold and prickly is that we never get to hear the choir sing on camera because no one will pay the rights for the music. Yeah, thank you, producers. Bravo, producers. But that's mine. What about yours? Uh, my warm and fuzzy was actually when Monica was yelling at her mom and saying, yeah, you left me in the back seat while you made out with your boyfriend. And she goes, that happened one time. That happened one time. <laughs> that just makes me giggle. Um, my cold and prickly was probably um, not proving that Monica was lying about the texts from her family because we never got to see the texts. True. So that's my cold and prickly because you see everything else. Everybody yeah, posts there's, like there's screenshots. <laughs> yeah, everything but the yeah. You're right. Yeah, but you never see her hers uh, her screenshots. You know. Well, folks, if you follow us on social media, we'll make you all warm and fuzzy. On Facebook and Instagram, we are The Real House Bears. On Twitter, X, we are Real House Bears. You can email us at therealhousebears at gmail.com. And you can buy merch at the website, realhousebears.redbubble.com. And you will make me very cold and prickly if you don't start sharing our podcast to all of your friends, getting them to listen, making comments and, um, you know, rating us five stars and yeah, uh, you got a few weeks becoming to get hashtag house bears famous. Yeah. What? So you got a few weeks to get your friends caught up because we're taking a little bit of a, you know, a short sabbatical, if you will. Yeah. Just don't start with the, our first season. Just start yeah. with the second season. Second season <laughs> is where we really try to or, or even the third, wait for us to get our wings. <laughs> <laughs> um, you could watch us anywhere you want to watch us, like on YouTube and Spotify. And you could listen to us wherever you listen to your podcasts, including Apple and Spotify and all those cra other crazy ones that people probably don't, uh, I don't know. Um, and if you're on Apple, please give us a five-star rating and a cute little review and we will make you hashtag House There's Famous. Bye. Bye. Okay, love you. Bye. I think we made some good progress here tonight.